concept for coming up with formulas and names for ionic compounds is that the charges on the ions must cancel to zero. So from the periodic table, remember we're going to take column one and put a plus one above it. Hydrogen's not going to be a metal though, we'll ignore hydrogen. Column two, we're going to put a plus two. We're going to skip to aluminum and put a plus three and then a plus two and a plus one. So these are simple metals because there's only one possible charge. We'll talk more about that later. Then the non-metal column really only goes to here, down this diagonal. Fluoride column is negative one, the oxygen column negative two, and negative three. So our non-metals are going to have negative charges. We can also have another type of non-metal where it's an entire group, where the polyatomic is the entire uh, group, and that entire group has a charge. So we're just going to practice coming up with formulas from the charges canceling to zero. So for example, if we have a sodium and a chlorine atom, if we look at the charges, sodium is a plus one, and chloride is in the minus one column. So we need to actually show the charges, Na plus 1 and Cl minus 1. A plus 1 and a minus 1 cancels to 0. So the formula for this is one of these with one of these, NaCl. And the name of this is sodium chloride. We change the ending to IDE, which we already know. We already know that the name of this is sodium chloride. If we have sodium and an oxygen atom, for example, sodium is still a plus one because sodium's charge never changes. And now we look for oxygen. Oxygen is in the minus two column. So we'll put the charges on there. And we're going to see that it takes two sodium ions for every one oxide ion. So in order for these charges to cancel to zero, two sodiums gives us a plus two charge. The minus two on the oxygen makes those charges cancel to zero. So this formula requires two sodiums for every one oxygen. And the name of this is sodium oxide. Okay. It has a different formula than sodium chloride because the charges are different. We'll do another one. We'll put sodium together with the nitrogen atom. So sodium's charge is always the same. Sodium's a plus one. We look for nitrogen. Nitrogen is in the minus three column. So the charge on the N will be minus 3. And we may be able to just tell by looking. We need three sodiums for every one nitrogen, Na3N. So this formula may look strange, but again, that's because we need three of these positive 1 charges. So we have a net charge of plus 3 from three sodiums. And then that cancels the minus 3. And the name of this is sodium nitride. So just a symbol from the periodic table turns into an IDE. I'm going to do a couple of examples now with magnesium. So if we get rid of this, if we have magnesium and chlorine, we're going to find magnesium on the periodic table. Magnesium is a plus two. So we'll write down the charge for magnesium. And chlorine is in the minus one column. Here, a plus two and a minus one don't cancel. So we really need another chloride ion. So plus two cancels minus two. So this gives us the formula MgCl2. The charges 
dictate what the formula is going to be. But the formula never has the charges written on it. So we're going to name the metal magnesium, and we'll name the nonmetal chloride. We will not use Greek prefixes. We're not going to say magnesium dichloride. So when we name ionic compounds, in other words, a compound that has a metal in it, we're just going to name the metal, the full name, and then we're going to name the nonmetal. And so this has the same name technically as sodium chloride, but the formula is different because the charges are different. So let's look at magnesium and an oxygen atom. Magnesium is always a plus two. Now we're going to look at oxygen. Oxygen is in the minus two column. So we're going to put a minus two charge. And then we can see that a plus two and a minus two cancels to zero. So this will also be a one to one ratio. We're going to name the metal and then name the nonmetal. So this is magnesium oxide. Okay. And then just to do overkill here, we'll put the magnesium with a nitrogen. Magnesium, still a plus two. Magnesium is one of those metals whose charge never changes. So magnesium is a plus two. Nitrogen is a minus three. So we're going to write down the formula. And a simple way to come up with the formulas is just to put this 3 over here and this 2 over here. This is just a trick so that we don't have to think. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and name this. This is a metal magnesium. So we just write magnesium. And that's messed up there. Nitrogen becomes nitride. So if it's just a symbol from the periodic table, like an N, we're just going to name it nitride. It may end up being a polyatomic ion like this, so we'll worry about that later. But anything that comes from the periodic table is going to end in ide. Okay. So let's look at this formula here. We have three magnesiums, so that's Mg plus 2, Mg plus 2, and Mg plus 2. Well, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, and then this N minus 3, we have two of them. This 2 means there's 1, 2, and negative 3 and negative 3 adds up to negative 6. So the charges cancel to 0 only when we have this formula. So the names don't have anything to do with the formula. The formulas have everything to do with the charges. In fact, that is the most important thing for an ionic compound. The charges cancel to zero. So we're going to see that we have a very consistent naming system. We name the metal and we name the nonmetal.